Okay, so this will be a video showing you how to replace a CVT transmission in a Mitsubishi Mirage. And this will apply to any 2014 and newer all the way up to 2023 or newer than that, I'm sure, until they quit selling them here. Okay, so the car I'm working on today is a 2017 with 448,000 kilometers on it. That's the one thing I do sometimes when I'm doing bigger jobs like this where you want a lot of light under the hood to just take the thing off. I got really good lights in the shop that I work at, so that's what I do. Here I'm just unhooking the washer fluid hose. It connects right it, right near the hood hinge there. It just pulls apart, so do that. And then uh, all that's left holding the hood on is four 12 mil bolts that hold the hood to the hinges, and it's uh, pretty straightforward there. Next, uh, get the battery out of the way. Start with a negative cable. It's a 10 mil for both posts. Do the negative first. Um, then uh, the battery hold down bolts. They're also 10 mil. Undo those, then battery just lifts out of, out of there. And then there's this little fuse box at the front of the battery tray. It's held in uh, a couple little clips. You gotta kind of pry them towards the rear of the car. This is facing the front of the car the way I got the camera and that's a little fuse box like a relay box for the little electric heater that's in the heater box but I got a little bit about that in a different video but yeah you can just get that out of the way tuck it down behind the headlight just uh then there's a what is it I think it's 12 mil 12 mil bolts that hold the uh, battery tray to the transmission mount I believe it is yeah, so there's going to be two bolts underneath where the battery was, and then there's a third bolt at the very front, right on the frame rail, kind of just below where that fuse box was. Okay, so once you get the bolts out, there's going to be a bunch of the wiring harness attached to the battery tray, and you can't get it out until you get all those little clips out. You can use a pair of pliers, or what I usually do is stick a 10 mil socket or a box end wrench over top of the clip. It kind of pinches the ends, and it fits perfectly, and... That's usually what I do to get all those little clips undone. Typically works good. And there, the ground cable on the other side of the box too is attached the same way. Okay, next uh, let's get the air cleaner out of the way. First undo the hose clamp. You gotta get that out of the way because you gotta undo the throttle body. There's a whole bunch of steps you gotta do here. But the hose clamps are 10 mil. Depends on where you live. This might be easy or it might not be. Um, the bolt threads into that little rectangle piece. Sometimes you might have to hold that with a pair of channel locks or pliers because uh, otherwise the whole clamp will flip around. Or worst case, the clamp breaks and you just go buy another one. Just use a hose clamp or whatever works for you. But yeah, it's pretty straightforward. It's a hose clamp. Um, next is the mass airflow connector. The uh, easiest way I find is to push up on it first and then squeeze a little tab on the connector. Like just pinch it and then pull down. It uh, that seems to be the easiest way to go. Okay, then there's three 10 mil bolts that hold the air cleaner to the to the top of the engine. The one bolt holds just the, the air intake snorkel to the valve cover, and the other two hold the rest of the air box assembly to the. Well, one holds it to the valve cover, and the other one's a little bracket at the back. Um, usually need a long extension to get in there to the, to get the back one. Um, other than that, there's uh, the transmission vent hose is kind of just attached to it as well on the driver's side of the air box. And the crankcase vent hose is attached to that rubber hose. It just comes off with a little spring clamp with a pair of pliers and get that out of the way. Oh, and I had a zip tie holding the end of the snorkel to the wiring harness, so just snip that off there. Okay, then the air cleaner just lifts uh, straight up. Just be careful when you're pulling it uh, it has to come straight up just wiggle it back and forth a little bit because there's a little uh, dowel that sits into a rubber grommet on the close to where the rubber hose connects to it I don't think I got it on camera here but you'll see what I mean if you look at it and see just work it back and forth kind of put your hand underneath the actual air box and lift straight up kind of help it otherwise it might break okay next day undo the shifter cable 
there's a few different ways you can do this. You can either undo the nut that holds the uh, the cable pin. The end of the cable, there's a pin and a nut. Um, I don't know. There's a couple different ways. The way I do it, I just undo the shifter uh, lever right off the transmission. It's a 14 mil nut. And uh, then I undo the bracket from the transmission. Further towards the firewall, there's two 12 mil uh, bolts holding it to the top of the tranny. Rather than fight with the with a little bracket that holds the cable, I just take the entire bracket off and just move it out of the way. Yeah, there is another way to do this. At the end of the cable, there is a, a hairpin, cotter pin, no, not a cotter pin, a hair, a spring pin. You can just pull that out and then there's a washer but it's at the bottom it's kind of a pain to get lined back up after the fact when you go to put it back together that's kind of the only reason i do it this way it's they usually come apart easier than this but this one's pretty crusty and next unplug the connector on the throttle body and the uh map sensor that's on top you just push on a little tab and they come apart like this yeah next are the this four 10 mil bolts that hold the throttle body to the intake manifold they're uh yeah, one at the bottom is a little tricky to get to because the hose is usually a little snug up against the bolt. It's kind of hard to get a socket on. You can just pry that out of the way with a screwdriver. Now when you lift the throttle body out of the way, you can see just below where it was mounted, there's a 12 mil bolt that uh, bolts through a metal bracket to the end of the intake manifold. It's kind of just a little support bracket. You got to get that out of the way there. Okay, so here's the top of the transmission. You can get to these two bolts relatively easy. Well, you can see them pretty easy. There's one, two, and then there's a third one right here that uh, you get to that goes from the engine into the transmission itself. And there's another one further down there too that also goes the same way. And just be mindful, there are different lengths of bolts, so you only go back in the one way. Okay, and looking at the back of the engine here, there's well, that rusty piece of metal, that's the exhaust manifold. There's one more bolt right there. You can barely see my finger on it that goes from the engine into the transmission back there. Um, that one might be easier to get to from the bottom. Okay, so now uh, there's a bunch of little clips that hold the wire and harness to these little rusty brackets. You can either undo the brackets themselves with a 10 mil or use a 10 mil to pop the clips out. Either way, I usually just take the, pop the clips out. And uh, just like this. Okay, and now with the top rear of the transmission, there's one speed sensor here, and there's another one further down that's uh, your output speed sensor, I, I guess that one would be called. And there's a third one here on the front on the side. Those are your three speed sensors, and further down, just next to the dipstick tube, is a another pain in the hoop to get out sensor. And this is the last uh, connector on the transmission. This is the one that's right on the shifter. This one's kind of sometimes a pain. They get packed with dirt if you're in an environment like where these cars are used and lots of dirt and road salt and crap like that. So blow it out with a blow gun. Give it a couple taps with a screwdriver and get all the grit and crap out of there. If uh, yours any, looks anything like this, it'll make life a lot easier. Yeah, so in a perfect world, it'll come apart just like this. Just push down on that little clip and it'll just pop right off like magic but uh, that usually doesn't happen like that okay so now back to this connector and this one can be tricky i already blew all the dirt and crap out of this one but this one you gotta push in on a tab and then rotate that light gray collar you gotta spin it uh counterclockwise if you're looking at it from the top kind of you turn it a little bit and it lifts at the same time and then it'll stop and then you got to turn it way further than you think you have to okay well i guess uh going back over here to those bell housing bolts i just use a wrench and a ratchet wrench to get those two top ones off first the shorter bolt goes on the 
the front side closer to the rad, the longer bolt goes on the back side closer to the firewall. And back down to that first bolt that points from the engine into the transmission, you can get to that one with a wrench from the top there. And I noticed this upper rad hose where it goes into the cylinder head, it's, uh, it's all corroded. The clamp is weakened, it needs to be replaced. I'll do that once the tranny's out of the way there. Yeah, so now might as well get the dipstick out of the way. There's one 10 mil bolt right at the very bottom. It's, well, right where it bolts the transmission. And there's another one up at the, uh, almost near the top, close to where one of the wiring harness clips mounts to it. They're both uh, 10 mils that hold that together though. And I almost forgot about this part. You gotta drain the rad. There's a drain right on the bottom. Um, there's a little white uh, spin -a jig plastic wing nut looking deal. Just unscrew that and drain it out. Oh, looks like another hose clamp. Needs to be replaced. Okay, so now I'm moving underneath the car. We gotta get the starter out of the way. Uh, it's all 12 mils and one, uh, the little wires just held on. You just pinch a clip and pull it off. So 12, 12, and 12 for that. And then there's a little aluminum bracket. Those are all 12 mils. 17 mil for the, the wishbone mount there that goes from the subframe to the engine. And yeah, mostly all just 12 mils to get the inspection cover off. And then there's one more bolt above the starter, that 10 mil there to get the inspection cover off so you can get the torque converter bolts undone. And there's one more 12 mil for the uh, bell housing bolt. One or two more, I can't remember at this point. But uh, once the starter's out of the way, you can see a little bit more. And then there's a bracket for the shift cable. That's another 12 mil. You can kind of reach up in there. Yeah, and here you can see two of the bell housing bolts here and here. And there's also a little bracket that I'd usually take off. It's easier just to undo a 10 mil bolt off to the left, that one that holds the O2 sensor wiring on there. And here on the bottom right of the screen, you can just barely make out that last little black sensor. That's the output speed sensor. I didn't show uh, getting that one unhooked here. But, uh, yeah, let's move up to the front. There's that gray connector, that round one. You gotta push in on that tab just like this and rotate it counterclockwise if you're looking at it 